Welcome to the start of a new anime review series. This is Skeletal Night to Another World. Anime review episode number one. Yep. A new anime that started this week. Well, not airing the very day I wanted to cover it. Because of, well... Mainly the reason why I was not able to cover it the day I wanted to, because basically I was streaming tonight. It's the reason for that. And this has become, right now anyways, with this very episode here, this is the fourth new anime I've gotten to just this year alone. And the first one was basically Dot Topic Recurrence of Slime. This is the first original anime, not a previously aired anime, that I've covered this year, which is good. Where it's not like anime aired some time ago that I watched this year. And this is actually the first one this year that's happened like this. Now last year I had several series. Uh, before I talk about the actual episodes, oh, don't worry, I will talk about the episode. Now these, now there's a few shows that aired last year. So one of whom I actually am still doing review for it. A uh, few of them basically I, I actually did review those the very year they came out. Some of them I did, some I didn't. Okay, so the ones I did review for, for shows that started that very year, on the day it came out, was Shaman King, Eden Zero. Uh, don't tell me it's not going to was actually already airing by the time I started watching it. Uh, Meshuggah 10, Shaman's Incarnation. I actually read this one with the second Kerr. How is it with the Kingdom? That one basically started up when it first aired. Case of Mantos, one I just wrapped up last week. Drugstore in the World, Restaurant in the World, and there were a couple others that came out last year that I did review of last year. World's Finest Assassin is reincarnated in the World's Aristocrat and Banished Hair Party. Several of these shows started just last year. Some actually, uh, the last two actually concluded, like, just by sheer coincidence for some reason. Like, okay, I catch up with the anime, and then, like, my first episode they come out and it's the final episode of the season yeah I don't know why um, this one I'm hoping not to do that now you might be curious though will, will the show come out basically like day comes out it depends yes now as for the episode itself well I should talk about the anime itself per se well at least the series excuse me they kind of explain the premise with pretty much with the, with the first episode uh, the first episode is called The Wandering Knight Sets, sets Out to Make a, a World a Better Place. This adapts the first couple chapters of book one for the series. Yes, book one. Uh, book one, when I read it, because uh, I read it in here, it is like 190 pages. Really short. I, I managed to get through this in a couple days. Mostly put, the anime does cover the first two chapters pretty well. They do have some slight alterations here. Like, they cut some de bits of dialogue out. But, if you think, like, it's really, like, major story changes, per se? No, not really. Well, they did start out, basically, part way into Chapter 1, for some strange reason. They started with the thing we show in the trailer, which is a group of bandits trying to rape a noblewoman and her maid. Yes, for some reason, we have, we have to have the studio who makes this series... Start off with this. And I have no idea why in the world to do this. But I would who made this is Studio Kai. Also Studio uh, called Hornets as well. This is Lights by Crunchyroll. And this is the first anime I've actually watched that they've actually worked on. Really? Yep, really. Uh, the previous two shows, one actually aired the very same day. Which is actually aired just last year. Like, one year ago this week, they aired another series. They had two two series prior to that. One was Super Cub. I've never heard of this one before. The other is Uzumi Pretty Darby, second season. Don't like the sports stuff. Yeah. And apparently, they're also something related to Kamen Rider. So, it's a studio that only started just, just a couple years. Just, just... Almost three years ago. Not that old of a studio. As for Hornets himself, well, I've honestly never heard of this company at all.
Let's see, what shows they worked on? Well, this one and a studio uh, show named Semo and the Four Spirit, which aired two years ago. Yep. And if you ask me, have I seen this? No. I haven't. So we have basically a studio that I've never had experience basically with the animation, which I gotta admit, the animation looks really good. They took their time with this one. Mm -hmm. Now, we start with a little, like, the attempted rape. It's like, and he's like, the guy's like laughing maniacally. He's like shredding her clothing. It seems like he's about, like, they mentioned, oh yeah, she peed herself. Yes, this happened, book two, so... No, the enemy did not make this scene up. This is a scene that pulled straight from the book itself. And they didn't add a line to the scene. They did cut some lines out here. Like, you see, in the anime, the pretext is that you can tell basically by the dialogue is that these guys are going to rape these two women. And in the case of the, of the book, they actually want to strip them to sell their clothing. Yep. Well, also try to rape them as well. And they also had a line in the book where, like, oh, this one, the words, like, dirty. We're not, we're, we're, we, we can't sell this anyways because it's cheap heat on it. Yes, and then we have our, our hero for the series pop up behind these guys and slice them all in half. Not like, whoosh. I'm like, whoosh. Like, hor like horizontally. Not vertically, horizontally. Yeah, it's kind of gross and they do put a warning at the start of the episode very discretion of eyes which good on Crunchyroll's part for putting out there because this is a great graphic scene I'm like really Crunchyroll like okay I'm not gonna blame them for that. I blame the studio why the heck would you start with this scene because yeah this was seen in the trailer leading to the show now I have no problem with the scene itself it's presented really well and yes, this happened in the book, which probably makes this by far the second anime I've covered where the opening scene is a rape scene. Like the last one I covered that did this was Goblin Slayer. But here's the thing about that. Okay. Okay. Anybody who's going to basically go just crap on the studio for opening with this. Okay. Here's the thing. Goblin Slayer went through the same thing of several years ago when they aired that first episode. And here's the thing. You should not blame the studio who make that scene. It is not their fault. They adapted a scene that happened in the book. It probably was important they adapted it because they can't skip over something important as that. Like, if you want to blame somebody for creating that scene, don't blame the studio who made this scene. It's kind of similar here. Don't blame the studio... Blame the original writer who came up with the original scene. Yes, that is my ass opinion. So anybody who go, goes crap out like, oh, like this studio, this brand spanking new studio who has not done very much had a rape scene in the first episode. Okay, by the way, the person who makes the, the series is Eniki Hikori. Who, yeah, it's based on a light novel. And it is published here by Seven Seas Entertainment. I, published, I brought some books in them. Uh, it's basically illustrated by KEG. Now, in the case of this particular scene, I did not think it was necessary to open with the scene. And you might think... Now, I don't know if it's just by sheer coincidence that this type of thing opens up an episode of this series just like it did for Goblin Slayer. But that was one of the things that would happen over the course of the series. This one... Here's the thing, the books I read, this only happened once. It happened several times like it did Goblin Slayer. So, right after that, right after the show up, our nice new to new character. By the way, the lead character's name is Ark. He's a knight who's a skeleton. I originally was not going to get into this series, like, because it was an anime at the time. This was like a year or two ago. And I was like, oh, we got an anime for this one. Okay, interesting. And plus, there's been jokes online that this character might be a cousin of Ein's El Gohm from Overlord. Just because he's a skeleton. Yep, that's the only reason why. I had to bring it up because otherwise, though, people would say, Hey, Nick, why didn't you bring this, this up for this particular character? 
Yeah. Now, we are introduced to a, about four characters in just the opening episode alone. Ark himself. There's also the female lead of the series. Yeah, she's introduced in the very first episode. You're thinking, really? She's in the first episode? Yes, she is. Arlene. Very briefly, mind you. Oh, yeah, she's in there for one quick scene, and that's it for her. Although, I don't think this happened in the book. I think this is anime original, maybe. It's like, oh, yeah, we have an elf in this world, obviously. The other two characters who show up in this episode are Lauren Lorena de la Vite and Rita Farron. Rita Farron is the. Excuse me, it is the. Uh, maid and Lauren is the noble woman who basically had suffered through attempted rape. Now, from what I can tell from the scene itself, like before it gets into what happens next, which by the way, that was a flash forward, believe it or not. And then we go back to the start of chapter one. We have Ark waking up in a field. Now, in the book, he was laying on the ground when this happened. In the anime, they switched it up where he's leaning against a tree. I don't have a problem with this change. It's perfectly fine. He wakes up like, huh, I'm wearing this armor. He also mentions he's kind of hungry. He's like, oh, look, there's a river nearby. And he takes up his helmet to show, oh, crap, I'm a freaking skeleton. Yes, I got hand to the anime. This op this particular scene, almost spot on. I think they cut it like two lines of dialogue from, from the scene. Like, wow, really good job here. And of course, mentioned like him, like where he mentioned he can't go out in public, uh, show off his face because he's he's, a, he's basically a skeleton. Then you bring up some stuff that of him being cursed. Like the reason why he's in a skeletal form. They don't bring they do. I think they do bring up they don't bring up the fact he wanted. I'm trying to remember quickly, because it's been a couple hours since I watched this. Now, now, there's something he brought up in the book that he actually wanted a golden skeleton form, and he said the reason why he picked this particular thing, despite its, despite it was very costly, probably more simple, because it basically allows more of the armor a lot more. So, he decides from that point forward to not take off his helmet. Well, Here's the thing, in the whole entire episode, aside from this one scene, guess how many times he's got his helmet? The entire episode. Once, at the very end. Because right after this, we see him. Okay, this is what he does. Okay? What he does, he try to use gate, which, yeah, this is a common move you would see, uh, ability you see in several other anime I, I, I've seen. Series like, you know, on my smartphone. Uh, let's see what I'm trying to think with the other ones. Um, How Not the Sim and Demon Lord does he use this too? Mostly it's it's found Isekai based series. You could say also that this is kind of found in Hidden Dungeon Like an Enter. Kind of mostly. It's assembled with the with the elevator ability that was used in that one. But mostly it's, it's mostly Isekai feature. That's mostly put what this particular feature is. is the whole gate ability. He could go very far, get some of a clip that he told you sort of a, like a rapid dash ability, and then he ends up basically going to get money for food, and then he goes into town, wearing his helmet, mind you. Oh, by the way, this is, that's when he takes up his helmet to see he's, he's a skeleton. So, he goes into town, walks around, and everyone thinks, oh, he must be a holy knight, based on his armor, and he can't pay for the food because he's using the money, so... Just by sheer coincidence, he stops by a mercenary guild, which, yes, it is in the book, too. He stops by there, and he basically requests to, like, like, you know, get jobs, basically, in order to get a license to get the job. So, put their trial, okay. At least he had to pay for the license, like they did in, I think it was Konosuba they had to pay for it. Yes, I think Konosuba had to pay for their license for that one. This one, nope, just go through a test and you, you, get, you get the license, no problem. So basically, you hunt monsters or kill bandits. That's, and bring back the proof, basically. And so he goes to the field, he kills a couple of boars, and then he kills an orc. Yes, an orc. Then, of course, then comes the infamous scene. 
Which, by the way, in the version I read, basically, was the start of chapter like three or four. So, he's very hesitant at first to get involved because he didn't think he should get involved with this. So, he finally gets involved when the guy is basically about to do a dirty deed with her. So he comes, now, there's a line they added here in the anime, which actually this line does not exist in the book if I read. He's like, why did it get dark all of a sudden? And then he gets killed. By the way, the, this bandage leader, uh, in the episode, he's unnamed. He just basically just a random guy. In the book, I believe his name is Booty. Uh, I think it was Booty or Bruno, and then we get some B. But that's what they did with it for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Yeah, so... They did bring in the book, basically, like, right afterwards, that... Basically, Ark asks the girls after he saves them, which, by the way, the maid basically gets part of her clothing toward, like, basically her shoulders, and asks the girl, nearby river to clean up. In, in the episode, that didn't happen. They mostly went to a nearby forest and looked like he was kind of peeking on them while they were changing. He proceeds to dispose of the bodies, keeps the horses, and they, they, they actually cut some, they, they cut like a whole, almost a whole conversation out here. Where as we can sell this stuff, and he, he does. They do cut what uh, what he actually found, which is a bunch of money and a bunch of food. They cut all that stuff out. All he says, "Oh, we have enough stuff here to basically live on for a while." Okay. And then of course, like, oh, you gotta come by. And then of course, then he goes back into town, and he goes. To the mercenary person, he just gives him like, "Oh, you gave me the same day, okay? So here's your license." Yep, yeah, there's a license, and you probably think, "Okay, like, oh, it's like we're like," and then he goes back to his inn. By the way, they cut a small scene out here of him how he got the inn room, where in the book basically he just walks out like, "Oh, you want like I like a room." Like, what? You need something? I want a room. Like, oh, you want a room with us? Yes. In the anime, it's like, he gets there. Apparently, he got, got the room off screen. And then he's like, bring my food in my room. We got a whole bunch of food. We do see him, like, once again, eating with his helmet on. They do know in the book, they actually can eat normally. Food doesn't, like, go down, like, his jaw. Or, like, you can say it basically goes right in his stomach. It's, like, all over the place, like, inside of his armor. Because they didn't know this in the book, but in the anime, there's no mention we see him laughing at the end of the episode. And, well, that's it. That's the end of the episode. It's a really good episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you're probably thinking, wow, you just picked 20 minutes on a single anime episode? You must have really liked it. Yes, definitely I did. Yep, though I had to also compare and contrast between other anime I've watched. But yes, it's Nisekai. And it's only the first episode. Now, I shall also point out, though, that his pet... I believe her name is Porta, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Ponita. Yes. She does not appear in the episode. Nope. Yeah, they don't have her here just yet. Uh, they may have her in a future episode. Mm -hmm. What episode, per se... I have no idea. They might have it probably in next week's episode, possibly, because from what I can tell, it seems like this episode covered roughly the first uh, chapter and a half of the manga of, of the actual light like, novel. It's definitely a good episode, and I'm definitely looking forward to what happens next, particularly in the next week's episode. Yep, so yeah, that's it. I'm going to do one video tonight, and I'll call it evening. Next one's going to be. A comic corner. Yep, a comic corner. Okay, next video. Bye.